I've seen some bad shows, but this one. <laughs> hey guys, it's Greg. Welcome back. I spent an hour and a half today watching Velma on HBO Max so that you don't have to. I hurt myself today. Now, we could sit around and talk for a very long time about why this show is just so god awful, and it is. But I did some thinking, and I think I narrowed down why it's just so bad. And it really comes down to three things. And it wouldn't surprise me if in the writer's room they had like a 10 foot vinyl banner that was made to say three words, subversive, meta, edgy. Every single thing that's wrong with this show has to do with one of those three things. They just wanted to subvert everything. They wanted to be as edgy as possible and they wanted to try to make as many meta jokes as they could and, and wink at the camera and break all the walls and everything. It just, they were trying to do everything and they were trying so hard that none of it worked. So let's just jump in. Obviously, spoilers for the show, which shouldn't matter because you shouldn't waste your time watching this. You must never go there, Simba. Show opens up and we immediately get what is going on a lot with shows. I'm actually working on a video right now about this, that shows are being influenced heavily by shorter form content, YouTube videos, TikTok, Instagram reels, all that. And a lot of television shows, they feel like they just have to jump right in and just beat you over the head with the story because they're terrified that you're gonna go somewhere. If you're making YouTube videos, this, this makes perfect sense. Statistically, I've got 15 seconds to tell you that what I'm gonna talk about in the video matches the thumbnail and the title and what your expectations were or you're gonna click off. So the show opens up and we're instantly monologuing just telling us what the plot is. We're just diving right in with a monologue. Right off the bat, we're going meta by letting you know you're watching a television show and they know it's a television show and this is an origin story. And then they wanna go subversive, but it's not like any origin story that you've heard. Then they go in with the feminist thing. Velma says, usually origin stories are about some man who's dealing with the burden of being handed even more power. Oh my God. Okay, Mindy, we get it. Then she says, if it is a woman origin story, it's usually like, wow, how'd this hot chick go crazy? Oh my God, we get it. Then she says the story is about how she formed the squad. And then she makes a point to say it was, it was her. It wasn't Fred and his weird sex van. She says, it just, it, this is literally the first 25 seconds of the show. Wow, this is garbage. They're just slapping you in the face with the plot, the message they wanna send you, that they're subverting everything, that they understand you're watching a television show and they, they're in on the joke. Just, it all just is attacking you immediately and none of this is working. So we open up and we're in a locker room and it's Daphne who has been palette swapped to be Asian now because subversive. She's in a dirty locker room. She sees a cockroach call out from a trash can and then another cockroach comes out and starts humping the first cockroach. And they're just there banging. Cockroaches banging. <laughs> I know I said the three words that they were obviously going by. Another big thing is obviously they have just watched a lot of television and they've seen things work and they completely missed why it works, okay? Dirty humor can be fine. Bathroom humor can be fine, right? It's been successful for literal centuries. Shakespeare was writing dirty jokes. The thing is, if you're just being gross, it's not funny. Like if it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't have a point, it's not funny. This is why Amy Schumer didn't work out at all because she thought, well, if I'm just gross, like I'm a woman and people don't expect me to be gross and if I am, that's funny. And it was interesting and taboo, like the first time she came out on stage, and then it loses its humor extremely quickly. Schumer, Silverman, they think if I just come out on stage and go, wow, I know I'm a girl and you probably don't expect this, but I love <laughs> right in my <laughs> Isn't that really funny? I really love when a guy <laughs> right all over <laughs> And it's really funny because I'm a girl and girls don't usually say things like that, right? It's not funny and it doesn't work in this show. Daphne goes to the showers and there are a bunch of other girls. They're all in the shower, they're naked. They have soap suds covering themselves up. Mind you, these are high school girls. So let's, that should make you feel icky. Again, they wanna go with the meta thing. A character immediately remarks, hey, you know in pilots of TV shows how there's like tons of nudity and violence to get people excited? That's really dumb when shows do that. Oh my God, I'm surprised the writers didn't have neck pain from winking so fucking hard. This goes on throughout the entire show where characters will comment, if this was a television show, this is what I would do right now. 
and I, I told you I watched an hour and a half of this show because I went back and I watched the first episode again. Why? With a notepad, 18 times in a 27 minute show. They make a little joke to let you know that they know you're watching a show. They're in on the joke with you. It doesn't work. Basically, again, they saw something that worked. They saw Seth MacFarlane do this and it works for him. It's his style of humor. And they thought we can replicate that. We can just make a bunch of random references and, and meta jokes and it's gonna be hilarious. And it's not. So then two of the girls start wrestling naked because again, we just need to have as much vulgarity as possible because that's somehow, I, I think the writers knew this show wasn't interesting at all. And so they had to have as much flash as possible to get you to even watch at all. Then we have Velma come in and she and Daphne start fighting because the show wants you to know immediately that they don't like each other. Uh, the first 10 minutes of the show is just characters coming on screen and basically a neon sign telling you the two dimensional characteristics about that character. They end up trying to subvert everything once again and be edgy about it. Uh, Daphne has been palette swapped to an Asian. She sells drugs. She's the school drug dealer. She's adopted by two moms. Norval Shaggy is a black guy for no reason at all. And he doesn't do drugs. At one point he says, I hate drugs while looking at the screen and then everything is silent while he makes blink noises to let you know, I, I get it, Shaggy's always been a stoner, but I'm not, get it, we get it, we're in on the, we, we're in on the joke, right? <sighs> we meet Fred, who is just an absolute buffoon. The show goes on to explain that he doesn't even know how to cut his own meat. He is a teenager who can't cut his own food and it is revealed that he has not gone through puberty because his life, he's a rich, spoiled white guy who can't recognize people who are ugly, continues to forget who Velma is even after meeting her seconds before because he's just that spoiled and entitled. Get it? Isn't that funny? Isn't that hilarious? I have a disease where I can't recognize people who aren't hot. Then it's revealed that he hasn't gone through puberty because he's never done a single thing in his life. And also he has a tiny penis. And that is said again and again and again. Fred's penis is real small. Everybody says it. I have this tiny, uh, a little, little. Norval loves Velma, but she thinks of him as a brother and that's pathetic. At one point she needs to get some money and he remarks to us that if this were a television show, I would pawn something valuable to myself and use the money to blackmail her into dating me. And then he just shrugs and goes, hey, that's what I'm gonna do. And then he goes to try to pawn something. It's it's just, the, it's the lamest jokes. It's, it's trying to do this meta humor thing. They're trying to do the same thing that She-Hulk tried to pull off in their final episode where like, they wanted to be with the audience. Like we know we made a terrible show, but if we say it was terrible, that absolves us of making a terrible show, right? Wrong. The show is still terrible. Doesn't matter if you correctly identify that it's terrible. Premise there would be a love quadrangle comes true. Norval is in love with Velma. Fred and Daphne are dating, but Def uh, Daphne is frustrated because Fred will not get naked in front of her. Again, high school children. At the end of episode two, Daphne and Velma realize that their enemy tension is really just sexual tension. And then they start kissing at the very end of the episode because I mean, they have to be lesbians because that, that subverts your expectations, right? Once again. You didn't see that coming? It's almost like this was the product of a writing competition that was like Iron Chef and the secret ingredient was subversiveness and it had to be in every single dish. And it's this tired ass trope. It's, it's just turning everything upside down just for the sake of it, pretending that it's interesting. Hey, this used to be a kid's show, but now everybody's cursing and they're fucking and there's drugs and isn't that interesting? No, it's not because it doesn't do anything with that flip. When you turn something upside down, it's supposed to say something. It's supposed to be interesting in some way. It isn't interesting just because it exists in an upside down form. Like eight or nine minutes into the show, Velma runs into Fred outside again, and he gives a straight up exposition of his backstory. Then she gives him an exposition of her backstory. They literally just spell out their life's history to each other so that we, the audience, know what to expect. Velma's mother gave her a gift that she hasn't unwrapped. We have a, a fun mystery box that we're supposed to be interested in, but just not. So much of this show, it's interesting because there are things that as I wrote them down, I thought that should be funny. And yet they just can't 
pull it off. There were several, like, like meta references can be funny. Family Guy's been doing it for years. The Simpsons has been doing it. Lots of shows get away with this and it works. And for some reason, Kaling and crew just cannot make it work. And I think that's because they're trying to force it. I think what's going on with them is very similar to what we saw in the video game industry when Grand Theft Auto was a big hit. And a lot of people thought, oh, it's just about beating hookers to death and sandbox violence, just wanton violence. And that's not what made the game so popular, but other people made games that were open world and you could run around and just blow shit up and they failed spectacularly because they didn't understand what made that game so great to the people that were playing it. The same thing is happening with this show. They see Seth MacFarlane make all these references and all these meta jokes and they think we could do that too. They see female comedians making all these gross jokes and they think we could make that work too. They see Ryan Reynolds breaking the fourth wall all the time and they think we should do that too. But none of it is actually working for them. In the first episode, there's only two moments that I thought were relatively humorous and they both relied on the same type of joke and that was just extended awkward silence, which is kind of Kaling's strong suit because she was on The Office and that was a tool that was used on that show all the time. At one point, she's being interrogated by the lesbian moms who are terrible police officers and they say that they're terrible police officers. In the show, she can't solve mysteries because she believes that solving mysteries caused her mother to disappear. She has hallucinations. And she says, I don't solve mysteries anymore and stares off and starts making muggy faces and they pan out and the women are looking at her like, what in the hell is going on? And it drags on for a while and it's actually pretty funny. The same thing happens later on. Daphne and her popular friends confront Velma in a bathroom. Daphne wants to give her a speech, but the toilet keeps flushing and it's one of the popular girls. Then she comes out, she washes her hands, the scene drags on. And then finally Velma tries to give the speech and then all the, she's lost all the steam and it was pretty good. Those were the only two real moments that worked, and I think it's because those are strengths that Kaling already brought to the show. She wasn't trying to copy what other people have succeeded in. The show also brings to light that Kaling really only has one character. She is very much like Amy Schumer in this regard. She's been playing Kelly Kapoor her entire life. I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Mindy Project. I don't know where you can even stream that, but my wife used to watch it. It's the same thing. She's a horny slut and thinks that's a super funny joke to tell all the time. And she's pretty annoying and acknowledges that she's annoying, but is still annoying to the people around her. That's the character she plays all the time. Velma is the exact same character here. Well, you're welcome. I watched this schlock so you don't have to. I don't think I'm gonna watch the rest of it, even for the sake of making a video. It's just not worth my time. This might be, I think this takes the crown from She-Hulk for worst written show of all time. It's that bad. It's trying so hard and it misses on every single account. Anyway, this Sunday, Last of Us is coming out and I am cautiously optimistic for that, but it does look good and the reviews have been good so far. So we'll talk about that in a few days. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.